Hey there, guys and gals. You're listening to the Tempest Universe. This is the Tempest Universe and the frozen universe of Texas. This is Manny. I am your host, and it's been quite cold out here. Quite cold indeed. So much so that uh, the podcast didn't happen yesterday. It was uh, was just too much going on. It was crazy here in Texas. Some of you that live in Texas, you already know this. You've seen, even if you don't live in Texas, you've seen the massacre that happened in Fort Worth a few days ago because... You know, Texans can't deal with ice and snow. It's not its not natural. It shouldn't be happening. But it did, and it is. I think people are saying that in San Antonio, it's like over 20 years. It depends where you tune in to. Some people say 20, some say 25, some people say 28 years. Since the last time snow fell in San Antonio, and uh, have mercy, its it's been crazy. Right now, the feels like it's 17 degrees. Apparently... Wednesday morning, we're going to get a little more. And it looks like, I just look at the damn forecast, and it said, oh, uh, apparently you're going to get some on Thursday too. Snow. We're breaking all kind of records. Like, if anyone that thought that uh, 2020 was the uh, the dumpster fire to end all dumpster fires, you are wrong. <laughs> you are so wrong. No. 2021 is, is making money moves in the dumpster fire realm. When it comes to Texas, well, it really everywhere, man. It's a, I don't think, I don't think 20, 2020 ended as a year as it had to, but 2021 is, is going to bring some new stuff for us. I just feel it. It's, uh, it's just the way it is. Now there's, uh, shoot, what, close to 400,000 people just in San Antonio alone that don't have power. Yeah, it's been crazy. Rolling blackouts. You know, lights flickering. No, it's not a poltergeist. It's your power company. It's fucked. It can't get you any power. So that's what we're dealing with right now here in Texas. Hopefully, today's Tuesday, right? Am I am I lying? And today's Tuesday, so hopefully Thursday we'll come back with the second episode of the week. I'm gonna make sure I get two in at least. Otherwise, people forget about you. You'll be gone out of out of ear, out of mind. But Thursday is a real special day because Thursday is the day that uh, Percy lands on Mars. Seven minutes of terror. So why not be there to cover it? Now it's going to happen in the morning or early afternoon in some places. uh, But uh, by the time that we get to the uh, Tempest Universe, Percy should be done. Either totally done for good, stick a fork in it, or it's settling down and hopefully... In about a week or so, I think, is when the little chopper comes out, uh, um, unfortunately. No, that's not the name of it. Um, Ingenuity, that's the name of it. So maybe that'll happen. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll be watching it. I'm sure some of you will as well. Some of you science geek types will be looking to see if a Perseverance um, will make it there on Thursday. So that's where we're at, catching everybody up. Don't forget about the contest for Professor Avi Lowe's book. Come on. Get in there into the description, the information, the stuff that you really don't even read about the podcast episode, but the link is in there. As well as you follow, if you follow the podcast on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all those great places, even on Tumblr, you will see the link is in there as well. Go ahead and click it. Put in your email. No, nope, no one's going to try to get the last four of your social, find out your rank serial number, you know, all that good stuff. None of that. It's just an entry. In order for me to let you know that you won, I need at least an email. I'm not getting phone numbers, date of births of your kids, the last time you took a good dump. None of that. This is just for me to contact you. Now, there's other things you can do through social action because it is a social media world. Though I'm starting to think I need to get off of Facebook. But 
you can do things like share a post or subscribe on one of the other channels you normally are not on. Like if you were following social media, you would see that I posted a video about two and a half minutes of Bugs the UFO Hunter having trouble trying to uh, handle going outside in the first ever uh, snowstorm he's been a part of. He's not a happy guy. I'm telling you, we spent a good 90 minutes just trying to get him to go out there and drop, uh, drop a deuce, as they say. And uh, it was quite a chore. Uh, needless to say, he uh, kind of missed the grass by a mile. He uh, Later on, he did come back and drop a deuce on the patio. But what can you do? It's cold as hell here in Texas. He didn't want to be out there. Hell, neither did I. But I had to go and shovel things, to be honest. This episode, we got four articles to talk about. We got things that we need to cover. The music today, it's all over the place. You will not believe how many different um, genres I'm going to cover in the music. So don't write me any hateration. I don't want to hear it. Just listen to the music or hit fast forward. Those of you guys who are alive, like the Asgardians, you're kind of stuck like Chuck. Huh, Green Man? Huh, Dre? Huh, Pucky? You guys are stuck. The Norm. He's in there, too. Texas Hellfire. Not much fire going on there, I'm pretty sure. Texas Hellfire is freezing as well. But probably has a good fireplace uh, burning up. Some good old wood, I'm sure. But by the way, the norm, I mentioned last week that I was going to get uh, an Asgardian to come on here. Hopefully, at least once a week, come on and uh, school us on what they know about ufology, UFO stories, and things like that. So... The Norm has stepped up to the plate. He's going to present what uh, I believe he's calling nap time. Hopefully you don't fall asleep, because I know I just said that and Davina's knocked out right now. But what I'm saying is, he's got this whole presentation he's going to give to us about someone that is very popular when it comes to UFO circles. You guys already know who it is. I'm not even going to go there. You know who I'm talking about when we're talking about nap time. But we'll let him present that. Oh, one more thing before I get to the... God, there's so much happened when you don't show up on the podcast. Uh, I have an individual who uh, sent me a, a uh, informational tweet saying, Hey, I'd like to be on the podcast because I get messages from aliens and I've, and I've created this picture book about it. <laughs> That was my initial reaction. Yeah. Then, then I said, "Hey, well, let's see the picture book." So I got, I got pictures of it, of these messages, these things that are happening to this guy, and he's putting it together in a book. Well, he did. It's, a, it's an actual fucking book. No, I'm telling you, it'll be great on your coffee table, I guess. So I, I did have to listen to a few other places he's been, and listen to some interviews. So I think he can do it. I think he can be on here and tell us how he came up with this picture book and what kind of messages they've uh, been sending him. Believe it or not. So we'll see. We're going to schedule it. Maybe he'll be here as early as next week. I don't know. we got to figure out what his schedule is, and we'll have him on, along with a little bit of nap time. Check out this track.
Sing for me sweet lullabies One thing that you 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 guys don't know, and some of you probably don't seriously, because I didn't even know this, and I've been living in Texas years, uh, Texas here about uh, whew, eleven years now, maybe twelve, maybe fifteen. Who the fuck knows? Uh, but it turns out that the reason why there's rolling blackouts right now in Texas, in case you didn't know, and actually Texas Hellfire just reminded me of that because she just said in a live chat, live reporting to you right now. Texas Hellfire has lost her power. Um, there's rolling blackouts. So the reason why this is happening is because Texas is not attached to the power grid like the rest of the country is. No, they're not. A, this damn state is not attached to the national power grid. It's got its own power grid, and it's fucked right now. And why? Because they say, you know, apparently we're not uh, we, we we're not used to this single digit or a negative temperature so we're not prepared so you guys are fucked we will be turning off your power every 30 40 50 minutes there's actually someone that's been reporting on these neighborhood app, neighborhood apps that they haven't had power since like 2 a.m when the snow first fell that night how, how crazy is that that's what we're dealing with so do not be surprised if the podcast comes to an end abruptly was it my fault it wasn't my fault. It wasn't ET. It wasn't the NSA or the CIA. It was CPS, which is the uh, power company here in Texas. So, uh, what can you do? Let's send them some hateration mails. Not too long ago, there's been um, there was a whole host of sightings. Right, there was like a lot of them about this particular craft. And it was driving me crazy. It really was. And, and I said about, I think it was like December, I mentioned, wow, we really have not seen this in a long, long time. Well, I've got an uh, audio clip for you, which um, tells you what 2021 is going to be all about. Listen to this. They're still coming. And I wasn't recording wasn't recording I was so excited I forgot to hit the record button I think I kind of like what 90 if not more this is Utah West Valley and this is what we think is unidentified objects a ton of them going over the mountains And there's still more. Wow, I think there was over a hundred of them, if not more. Yep. Because like I said, I was watching it for a couple of minutes because I'm like, I thought it was planes or something. And then when I ran in to get you. That's the last, that's the last of the fleet. That's it. He said that's the last of the fleet. Well, sorry, Utah Valley. That's where it's at. They're seeing UFO fleets of over 90 UFOs. Over 90. Like some people, like Scott C. Waring, will call this an armada. Like basically there's a mothership somewhere just poo- just pushing out. Like little UFO babies all over the place. Yeah. That happened in Salt Lake City, by the way. And I believe that happened uh, the 15th or something like that. Uh, actually, no, it was last Thursday, to be honest, at 5.30 in the morning. First of all, why are you out at 5.30 in the morning? That's that's what I want to know. Yeah, maybe they have to go to work. Who knows? Well, this report came in. Jennifer Campbell 
who uh, lives in the suburbs outside of Salt Lake City, shared that video. She recalled that early in the morning, I saw them flying in a straight line. There was a fleet of them flying over the mountains. What's it going to take for people to get up to speed? I don't understand what the hell is going on. Why is it that the Starlink satellites are still fucking with people's heads? It, it's crazy to me. Like, do you guys not have television? Do you not watch the news? I almost feel like every gov- every uh, city or state government needs to put out a PSA about these Starlink satellites. I mean, there's over a thousand of them now. Elon is heading for maybe what? What is that? 15, 20, 23,000 of these Starlink satellites? There is going to be a problem, I'm telling you. He's still having issues with uh, the science community because he's blocking out the stars. And yet, people in Salt Lake City have no fucking clue what the hell is going on. There's a fleet of UFOs flying overhead in a line. Like 90 of them. Wait, sorry? So, I don't know. Maybe we need to do like they did it during the World Wars, right? Just have a like a plane go over and drop a bunch of pamphlets and see what happens. I don't know. It, it just It's crazy to me that this is still going on. That people are still reporting these as, uh, as UFOs. And it's not... It's I mean, listen. Don't take my word for it. It's crazy, right? Because this made it to the meteorologist for the local TV and he's like "Um, shoot there was a lot of clouds in the skies approaching because there was an approaching storm we should call the air force first okay so they call the air force right the hill air force base the uh, 388th fighter wing because apparently they got a bunch of F-35s out there I don't think they have 90 but who knows and so they're like, uh, no, no, we're not flying anything in the morning. For fuck's sake, we're still running in our underwears. We're not out there freaking flying planes yet. Maybe it was the Starlink satellites. Huh. Hi, Vey. Yeah. Starlink satellites, of course, if you look at the... Uh, the link that's in the description, you click on it to the news article. Not only do you get to see the wonderful video that these uh, people took over at Westside, Utah, but you'll also get to see the screenshot of an app that tracks the Starlink satellites. And there's a bunch of them out there. I mean, you can go into, you know, uh, the iTunes, uh, the App Store, you can go into Google Play. And just look up Starlink, and you'll have hundreds, hundreds of these things, these apps, to track them for you. For fuck's sake, they even tell you which time would be the the best time for you to see them. So we know already that last Thursday at five thirty in the morning is the perfect time to see them over on the west side of uh, of Utah, over by Salt Lake City. So you don't even need a damn app for that. Be there. All the time, at that time, you're good to go. And, and they change. They don't stay the same. But uh, it's really weird that the meteorologist was saying that there was, like, cloud cover. Because for fuck's sake, over in Texas, if there's any kind of cloud cover, you don't see them. It's been over a year now that I've been trying to see these bitches in Texas. And I haven't been able to because it's been cloudy. Like, on a sunny day, those fuckers do not show up. It's a conspiracy there somewhere. Something's going on. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, so no. Now, the reason why, for those of you who have run out in your underwear looking at uh, Space Armada of all these chain of UFOs, you know, in perfect straight line, the reason why you see them so well is because these Starlink satellites are 60 times closer than any other satellite that uh, traditionally has been launched into space. They are low orbit satellites. And they're like really low orbit. So just imagine when there's like 24, 23,000 of these things. What the hell's going to happen then? I'm telling you. World War II, get some pamphlets, you know, put a picture of Trump on it. Maybe Trump like hugging Biden and you drop, I'm telling you, you drop a, 
a pamphlet like that, people are going to read that shit. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. And just put in there a picture of the Starlinks. Blame Elon. You know, let Elon get the brunt of the conversation. We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. <laughs> you probably don't want to put that on there because that would cause a panic. But anyway, you know, there's got to be a way for everyone to finally figure out that this is... It's meant to be. It's not a damn UFO. It's not coming from 4.24. Whatever probe you got the day before, that's the real deal. This is not. So save it. There's more to the story. In case you want to hear about that app that they used. And the craziness uh, of the people in uh, Salt Lake City and all the reports that they were throwing in. Trying to figure out what this was. I just, I don't know. Maybe it's... Maybe it's too far up the mountains for them to get the message that this is that this is okay. It is. contains adult language. There are 17 swear words carefully placed throughout. Kids, can you find them? I know I forgot to tell you guys to get your either your Google Translator out or your uh, Mojito ready because uh, it was Fuego. Actually, I just realized like I, I was like uh, I was kind of digging it a little bit and I realized I was getting to my vodka too quick because I've been barely halfway through the podcast and my vodka is halfway gone. It's a sad state of affairs, but I can tell you this, it does keep you warm. Honest truth. We continue with crazy ass UFO sightings, which um, just have no rhyme rhyme or meaning. I I don't understand where these reports are coming from. But we know that this one, at at the core of this report, 
is our favorite ufologist of all time, Paradolia Pete, a.k.a. Scott C. Waring. The uh, story comes out of Los Angeles. Multiple UFO orbs in Los Angeles. Conspiracy theorists say aliens are making use of COVID-19 situations. Now, the weird thing is that last year, during 2020, UFOs were great. UFOs were fantastic. They were not trying to take advantage of anybody. They weren't waiting for you to get a good cough out so that they can uh, grab you on the uh, at the posterior to insert the uh, probe. No. Last year, it was like, oh, UFOs are wonderful. People are staying home. They ain't got shit to do. So they're sitting on their patios. They're looking out the window. They're looking and finding aliens. So it was all good. It was fantastic. According to Scott C. Waring, what's happening now is that um, they're taking advantage of the whole COVID situation. Uh, the, the funny thing is, though, that this is a uh, this is another video that got posted about these uh, orbs that were high in the uh, Los Angeles sky. Uh, and again, unexplained. We don't know what was up there. If you look at this. Uh, there's a still image and, of course, the video. But if you look at it, you can't tell what the hell it is. You have no clue. It could be fucking birds. It could be drones. Have you guys seen what they do in Asia with drones? Like, literally. These are like 3D... They make these drones and put lights on them. And they're like 3D signs and shit. They, they make three-dimensional objects in the sky. So, No. I can't uh, I can't subscribe to these are actual UFOs, but you know people go crazy about this now, and uh, apparently because of COVID nineteen, the aliens are taking advantage of this. They're making sure that uh, they're out there doing their thing. Because what are you gonna do? You're a sick human. You're a, you're a sick hairless monkey. You're not gonna come after them. Shit, they don't even give a damn anymore. They don't even cloak. The quote from Paradolia Pete in this article is the glowing orbs are not falling and they're not moving much but do shine brightly. With so many people staying inside afraid to go out and possibly catch COVID, UFOs are becoming less and less afraid of being seen. But as soon as Bobby, which is the person who took the video, started recording it, it was like the aliens knew exactly what he was doing and the ships quickly disappeared from view cloaking really so this one guy this one guy had a magic camera that alerted aliens from what maybe sure i don't know like uh 40 miles away 30 miles away and as soon as he took out his camera he was you know it was done it's all over we're gonna cloak that makes no damn sense at all but Scotty Waring or Paradolia Pete is saying the opposite of what we were hearing last year. Last year, it was UFOs were out there because they knew they'd be, you know, on Front Street. Everyone could see them because people had nothing better to do. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of babies born, you know, what, uh, between now and maybe March, right? Because there's other things that people can do as long as they weren't carrying the bug but still honestly the story was more sightings people were more in tune with the news with uh, video releases by the government to the stars academy and all that kind of stuff it's all coming to a head this year we're supposed to have some kind of official disclosure but for fuck's sake apparently now, now we're so scared. Now, I mean, uh, we're well into a year of this COVID-19, and now we're scared shitless about it. I don't understand. It makes no sense to me. So the question is, were these drones or were there aliens? If you look at the video, I mean, I would go as far as say these are some big-ass balloons. Nobody knows. But I, I don't, I can see them being drones. I really can. But not according to Scott C. Waring, our favorite ufologist. 
He says no. Aliens give zero fucks. And so since we're scared, we can't even breathe on each other. Like literally, if you catch COVID-19, you're going to get swabbed in the anus. That's how scared we are. We don't want that swabbing because it's not a good feeling. If you live in China, by the way. It's not, it <laughs> hasn't started in the U.S. yet, but for fuck's sake, don't be surprised. If you go to the doctor to get your COVID test and he says, you know, drop him and bend over. Cause, and then he pulls out this big ass Q-tip and then he's like, hey, we got to be 100% sure you don't have COVID in your cavity, your posterior cavity back there. I, I don't know. Is this really happening in China? I don't know. I actually got a comment on Apple uh, iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Somebody says, I like the UFO show, but apparently this host um, does, did not take a good concerned look at COVID-19 where he mentioned the story. The fuck am I supposed to do? You expect me to go over to China and bend over and see if they're really going to swab me or throw me in jail? What is wrong with you? I don't understand. Did they, they did not see the part in the description that says it's a satirical podcast. So no, I will not. I will not put myself in probe's way by a uh, weird, you know, Chinese scientist or doctor that's been going around swabbing people's buttholes. I'm not going to do that if that's the uh, the way you want me to look at this uh, COVID-19 situation. I'm not going to do it. Uh, no thanks. So that is uh, another listener lost <laughs> on iTunes uh, because I'm not willing to get my butthole swapped in, in the, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I, I just, I don't understand that. Sorry. But anyway, that's not going to happen. But on the lines of Paradolia Pete, again, stretching and using COVID to his advantage, I guess. And you know what? You put COVID-19 in an article, well, you get more hits, I'm sure. So we'll see. We'll see. But uh, he is convinced that uh, COVID-19 may be a way to get alien enthusiasts to have to dig a little harder because the U.S. government and NASA are intentionally covering up the existence of extraterrestrial, fearing public panic, and so COVID-19 is that cover. Some people just... Oh, my God. He should go. We need to get Perry Dolly Pete to go over to China and get swabbed a few times and come back and report to us what color was the uh, the dragon that he saw. I'm just saying.
I mean, his next article is dedicated to the people in Utah, Salt Lake City. SpaceX launches another 60 Starlink satellites into orbit. However, <laughs> something went wrong. Something did not go right. It didn't. Yeah, there was actually a problem, believe it or not. The two-stage Falcon 9 booster shot up another 60 of these wonderful Pornhub transmitting baby satellites. I'm telling you, folks in the hard-to-reach areas, like these people who went totally off the grid, can now get the Starlink signal, still live, you know, you're not going to connect, you're not going to be connected to the interwebs, uh, through like a cable line, you know, you can still stay uh, at the top of Mount Rushmore, hidden in your your little tea, your 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 uh, your little uh, your tent and stuff. God, it's so cold, like I can't even think about it. Uh, and you still can't be able to get a satellite, you know, pick it up at your local grocer, and bam, you can get your porn up sitting on top of Lincoln. I'm just saying, why not? You guys who live in South America and, you know, in the rainforest, for fuck's sake, you and your parrot pet, your little parrot or your anaconda or whatever, whatever you like to call it, you guys can get Pornhub too. Fantastic. Thanks to another 60 Starlink satellites. Don't tell the folks of Utah, because we got a problem. We do. So this thing actually shot up, good to go. We got another sixty up there. He's reaching a thousand, actually more than a thousand. He surpassed he surpassed a thousand Starlink satellites. But when these uh, boosters came back down to land on the uh, the drone ship, something went wrong. The drone ship, which is named, of course, I still love you, in the Atlantic Ocean, the, uh, they missed the target. I can imagine if you're a scientist now in Boca Chica, you're saying, fuck. You know, it's like, damn it, we can't catch a break. Keep blowing these rockets up. I'm sure it's upsetting. I'm sure Elon was not happy about it, like, not one bit. Yeah. But the thing is, and this is what a lot of people got to look at, you know. So what? It missed a damn landing. But this damn thing actually did two. SpaceX uh, Dragon cargo resupply missions to the ISS. So, kudos. It also was part of the uh, the Starlink mission back in June. On top of that, it even had a trip sending up an Argentinian satellite back in August of 2020. Uh, 20, and then a spy satellite for the U.S. back in December. So it's not like this thing just rolled off you know, fabrication, and then it pulled a, a starship on us. No, it's just, it's been working just fine. Shit happens. So there is no, there is no threat to the future of Pornhub hitting those remote places. We're good to go. There are other boosters, and really people shouldn't take this as a sign that the end is near for these boosters and Starship and all that kind of stuff. Don't read between the lines. Don't. Because you'll go blind watching your your porn TV. Uh, now, the funny thing is, is that uh, apparently the uh, Space Force has actually picked up SpaceX as one of its, its uh, preferred suppliers of uh, space equipment, <laughs> space rocketry. That just doesn't happen for no reason. So you guys at Boca Chica need to chill out. It's basically what I'm saying. Shit's going to be blown up. That's the way it is. Just look at this booster. We got service to those people in remote areas. So what? It landed, had a mishap, and it blew up. No big deal. We'll just build another one. But this... Starlink satellite... This uh, these satellites are growing at a really good pace, and again, I think people need to be made aware of what they're seeing in the sky and what they're not going to see of the sky anymore, because Elon really is planning of getting, you know, into those uh, 
you know, 15, 20, 30,000 of these satellites out there. These uh, satellite constellation, as they call them. So right now it's a constellation, but he's he's trying to get to a mega constellation. Because how else is he going to beam signals into your brain? He needs the skies covered with Starlink satellites. Can you imagine that? All the people in remote places having Pornhub just and drilled right into their brain, right from the satellite. It's it's crazy. It's amazing. I know some of you are looking forward to that. But it is it is what it is. It's the future. They're not the only ones trying to put these constellations up there. There's a couple of other companies as well. Um, probably not as well versed in the uh, launch and the construction of these things as uh, SpaceX is. But... I'm sure we're going to have battles for space in space eventually. But that's why we got Space Force. To take out the competition once uh, Elon says they got to go. Get them the hell out of my path because my satellites are going to own the sky. We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. And actually, I think we received from Dave down, in, down under in Australia that the, uh, the Starlink service is about 99 bucks. Now, it's $99, but I've seen the UFO antenna that you put on your house or your car or your, your camper or on top of your teepee, wherever it fucking goes. On the back of your turtle. Wherever you get to put it. The thing is amazing. It is not like one of these uh, satellite companies we've had to deal with in the past. You know, back in the day when we used to club animals and and take them for their fur. No, this thing is, uh, it looks like, it's like the the Tesla of satellites. It's, It's amazing. Of dishes. It's an amazing product. You gotta check it out. Go to YouTube and look it up. Um, it is fantastic piece of machinery. So I'm sure at ninety nine dollars for the service, you got to pay something for that freaking equipment. I'm sure. So uh, we'll see what that is. But uh, one more, one more article to go, and it's about our our boy Percy on the way to Mars, and what I feel may not be happening with Percy, to be honest. So let's get it. <laughs> Your pity don't need anything from you You made me someone I'm not You made me realize what I got Don't want your sympathy Your eyes so full of tears I got my friends who got my back So don't pretend you're all I have You can't come crawling back here no more First you love me, then leave me Then say you're lost without me I found myself without you, I'm sure Look at me now, I survive, so don't you worry about me. 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 Ooh, ooh, baby, don't need you to love me, so you shouldn't worry. Stuff you left behind Don't want it lying all around Don't want a thing here to remind Me of your presence Cause I'm much better without No need for memories at all I'm done erasing you my love You can't come crawling back here no more First you love me Then leave me Then say you're lost without me I found myself without you I'm sure Look at me now I survive So don't you worry about me Baby, don't need you to love me, so you shouldn't worry mm. Hey, hey baby, I got all that I need, so don't you worry about me I'm living it up, I'm taking it high, yeah, I'm living it up Without you, ooh, ooh baby, I got all that I need, so don't you worry about me 
on Thursday, we finally get to see, what is that, the uh, seven seven minutes of uh, terror of hell of, oh, fuck, it's, gonna, it's not going to make it. That's what's happening this Thursday. Perseverance is set to land in the uh, Martian Lake Bed Jazeera Crater. I got to say one thing, right, because I, you know, it's cold, it's cold outside and you know, with uh, just nothing better to do sometimes besides trying to get bugs to, you know, take a dump outside in the uh, negative degree weather, which was quite the quite the task, I got to tell you. But, you know, besides that, you got to Netflix and chill, right? You got to look up stuff. And I looked up a particular deal. Actually, it was not even Netflix. It was on YouTube. It was a special by NASA about perseverance and, and all the people that it takes in order to get this SUV size robot it's a big ass machine all the way the hell up from you know from here to there it's a big undertaking There, there is no lie about that uh, and there is no way you can take that away from them it's, it's huge at the cost of two point four billion dollars, two four two point four billion dollars to land this thing, and then the very last seven minutes, you're sitting at the edge of your seat wondering what the hell happened, didn't make it. But then on top of that, you're gonna land in a uh, a dried up fucking Jazeera crater. What they believe is really a Martian lake from way back when, from billions of years ago, to dig into this son bitch to find out if there's billion year old fossils of, you know, microbes. It doesn't seem like it's worth two point four billion dollars. This this is the thing that just gets me. And you know, you're not even you're not even sending the damn gigantic robot to uh, at the tune of 2.4 billion to look at shit that might be alive now because all your instruments over the years have been saying there's something going on. You know, figure that shit out. But no, you're going to send Perseverance, first of all, with an experimental chopper, a drone, that it's going to shit out of it, and hopefully it flies, but... Most people at JPL apparently are thinking it's not going to work anyway. So, hey, fantastic. But, you know, after it shits this thing out, it's going to get samples from the soil, do his little tests, and then it'll, it'll, it'll put them in little tubes. These little tubes, for fuck's sake, these little tubes are going to be there until maybe 2031. Maybe 2031, because apparently there is a mission which they really haven't figured out yet. They assume, they're thinking about it, they're theorizing it, where there will be a mission to Mars to pick up all these little tubes and bring them back. You know, maybe. I'm thinking a uh, significant act like this, I'm thinking more like 2040. Surely most of us will be dead by then. For what? So you, you're basically going to spend another 3 or 4 billion just to get these little twos back. They've been sitting with uh, Percy since 2021. Who the fuck thinks about things like this? Listen, I, I appreciate everything you do, NASA, but for fuck's sake. Really? This is crazy. Anyway... They're saying that Jazeera Crater is about 28 miles wide and they are sure that the, the fucking thing was filled with water at one time about 3.5 billion years ago. And so they want to collect samples and see what's going on. Look for signs of ancient microbes instead of, you know, shit that's there now. I don't know. I don't know how they pick these missions. Like, do they pick a mission and halfway through they're like, oh, fuck, look, what did, look, that satellite just found that there's uh, methane in here. Something's farting over there. Maybe 
we should have Percy go with a sniffer. Maybe Percy can go with some swabs. I don't know. It's like you can't, they, they, they can't deviate from what they're doing. And depending on what uh, special you see regarding Percy, some of them say it has the ability to do both. Look for signs of life now, in the form of microbes, of course. And some of them say it only can look for ancient life. Either way, <laughs> it's, it's just nuts. It really is. So Percy's going to collect about 40 samples in about a year's, uh, two years' time. Uh, one year on Mars, which equals to about two years on Earth. Uh, to collect these samples and just, fuck, I don't know what the hell's going to do with it. Just hold on to them to see what happens. So the mission right now for Percy is two years. But we know. These uh, these drones, they said they sent up there, these robots, they tend to last and not just die off quickly. So I'm sure old Percy is going to be around for a while. So let's get ready for that. Now, on the other side of things, we have China. China, who has a satellite, a vehicle right now in orbit that it just got there that vehicle has a robot that is going to launch to the surface same shit they did on the moon they were actually able to launch a vehicle get some samples launch it back off the moon retrieve it and bring it back to the planet I just feel like by the time that we get this we're able to get this stuff from Percy China's going to have fucking Transformers on there doing the work for them. These Gundam robots, they're going to be for real. 2031, they'll have Gundam suits out there picking up the damn samples. They'll probably even offer to bring back Percy. Samples and all. There's like a lack of, I don't know, creativity, I guess, in NASA. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's where where we're behind when it comes to the space race. It's just not creative enough. You gotta think out of the box, people. Come on. Anyway, there's a, a quote here from Ken Farley. He is the uh, project scientist for uh, Percy, or officially Perseverance. He says, if we do a deep exploration, uh, I'm sorry, exploration of Jezero Crater with the rover and its instruments, and we find no evidence of life. We will have shown that in at least one place there is a habitable environment that is not inhabited. How the fuck is that a good thing? You literally just told everyone that you spent $2.4 billion to prove there's no life there. Makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. He continues to say if that's what we find, it will tell us something important. And no... He ain't telling you shit important. Uh, the the uh, habitability of uh, alone is not sufficient that something else has to be present, some perhaps magic spark that causes life to occur. If you ask Scotty Warring, there's like fucking rats, there's women running up there half naked, there's all kind of shit happening on Mars. So I don't know what this uh, what Farley's talking about. He's talking to the wrong people. He needs to get with it. Get Scott C. Waring on the line. He'll tell you what's up there. Freaking fossils and all kind of shit like that. But he's not the old. Get Corey Good. There's like reptilians up there too. I don't know. It's it's a. I think it's great. I think it's great that we are able to launch this uh, SUV up there just for fuck's sake to uh, dig shit up and hold it for about 10 years, maybe 15, to bring back and it not give us any answers about the Mars we know now. And if you look at the, the timeline of when Elon says he'll be able to go to Mars, for fuck's sake, who's, no one's on the same, they're not on the same timeline. 2031, Elon should be there already. Ask Elon to bring the shit back. Are you kidding me? What the hell is going on? <laughs> I don't know. This doesn't make sense. Really, if you look at you know NASA's timeline, especially just on this mission, you would think that they would coincide this with Elon's Starship development, which tells me that uh, somewhere the unspoken truth is is that Elon and Starship are not going to make it 
to Mars by the, the 2030s at all. That's really what it tells me. So someone's lying to us. Someone's lying to us about what's happening with these missions and how they coincide with each other. That's my theory. Somebody call Scott C. Warren and find out what he thinks. This is the end of the podcast. I thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to get on this description. Get into this contest. Two books got to go. The third book, Tinfoil Hat number three, the contest where you get to make your own tinfoil hat, protect, protect your brainwaves from the alien invasion. And I think Bugs might end up with his own tinfoil hat this year. Just so he can show the people, give him an illustration of how it's done. We'll see if he's willing to get into it, but uh, we'll see. Well, we'll you you just never know what is going to happen. But that will be available, hopefully, fingers crossed, on the um, the TempestUniverse.com. That's where we'll host the Tempo Hat Contest. So. I'm looking forward to it. It's always fun to see the creations that folks come up with, and it's just fantastic. So get your stuff ready. Ciao. It's over. We're done. Like a milli rocket, skin clear, still look y'all. Andy Miller knockers, money in my pocket. Don't call me a money pocket, engine get your rocket. It sound like a thunder rocket, yeah. I still love my baby, even when it's toxic. Crazy like she Britney, but no, she don't shade a knock. No, Russell what's the way I get long, stay in the pocket. I get paid and do my dance like a touchdown, yeah. I can't do no time, only that gun around. In my teens, we were acting up and running around. Now we're grown, still get to it if it's necessary. On the ground from January to January Never met nobody who retired when they were young, they were young So I guess young. I gotta get it to the cemetery go, go. Getting paid just for rapping this fun. It's fun I lit up around a month in every February Told me side, no electric, no electric. Yeah. It's getting hectic, hectic. 777 yeah. 777 yeah. Yeah. Told him side, no electric, no electric. Yeah. It's getting hectic yeah. 777 yeah, yeah. Seven, seven, seven. Couple of them one in my head just to say they did it Can't lie, I'm so paranoid in the window's tinted I own everything around me, you can say it's rented no, no, no. Not talking phone numbers when I'm talking seven digits it up, it Earn it by the day, every second minute Used to pay me none, look, now they pay attention Everybody said it drip, but I banded it See them copy all the looks, but I stay switching Pick up the loop, then hit the bank Can't ever change the road to change Captain say the pay to say the day They made me wait I'm breaking chains Yeah, yeah Tell me feeling bubbly Out the rose Took a minute But I got it Out the soul way Friends turn to foes Haters tell them go away Rappers make a shiggy dance Like a soul train Told them side No electric Electric Yeah It's getting hectic Seven, seven, seven Seven, seven, seven Yeah Told them side No electric Electric Seven, seven, seven. Yeah, yeah. Seven, seven, seven.